Ready Camera One. I am your host, Nuria Hurtado, and we have a very talented guest with us today. He has been a tattoo artist for a couple of years now and does an incredible job. I am happy to welcome Corey Brown back to our show. Welcome and thank you again for coming. So the first question, how many tattoos do you have? Because I, I was going to ask if you have tattoos, but I can't see. Yeah, no, I obviously have a couple, you know. Um, so it, the last time I counted, it was around 30, but uh, I've gotten a couple more since then. So I'd say about like 33, somewhere around there. And what's your favorite, what's the favorite tattoo that you have? My favorite tattoo? Uh, they're like children. I can't just pick one, you know what I mean? Uh, I like them all. I mean, I would say the rose, um, probably one of the better ones. I just got this one. It's a castle. It's not completed yet, but when it's done, I'm sure it'll look really nice. You know? Cool. So what got your interest in tattoos and make it your profession? Um, I guess it really started like when I started getting tattoos. So. On my 18th birthday, you know, I was, I was at the shop. I uh, wanted to get something just to stick my toe in the water, all that fun stuff. And I think that really is what sparked my interest in it. And uh, that's what made me realize that it's a profession. Mm -hmm. So how, what age did you start being interested in tattoo? Um, see, when I got tattooed at 18, I didn't really think I was going to go into it. I actually came here to Kent State, and I was um, a student for a while. Um, I started going to Defiance Tattoos down in uh, downtown Kent, and I think that's when it like, it's, like, hit me, and I was like, yep, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how long have you been tattooing? Um, so, I started my apprenticeship, I was 21 years old, so I would say about two years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, how is, how is that going? Do you like it? Oh, I, I love it. I'm, it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's one of those things where, you, you know, you just find what makes you wake up in the morning, you know what I mean? And I love going into work every day, I love meeting the new people, love doing my art permanently, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what type of education or training do you need to have to become a tattoo artist? So for the tattoo industry, you do an apprenticeship. Um, it's more of like a blue collar job, if you think about it. So um, you do your apprenticeship, every shop does it differently, and you choose your mentor. So uh, you find someone that you look up to, someone that you like strive to be like, and uh, they pretty much train you themselves. It's one-on-one. -on -one. There's no school for tattooing. That it, I mean, there are, but like, I don't recommend them. I think like, a, a, like just regular mentor, like apprentice, apprenticeship is the way to go. And who was the person or the place where you learned to tattoo? Defines. Mm -hmm. I would say everybody in that shop has given me a little piece of knowledge um, to make me a better artist myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a favorite client that you like to tattoo all the time? Or like ah, see, that's a hard question just because, like, all right, if you ask a teacher who their favorite student is, they're not going to tell you, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I'm sure I could think of a couple, but I'm not going to name them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was the favorite design that you tattooed on someone? Uh, my favorite design? Um, I would have to say probably that I did an angelic, like, a biblical angel. Um, I, I just had fun like researching like the different types of angels in the Bible, um, trying to like mix different things that would work and come together for a nice sternum piece, you know what I mean? But that was probably, I mean it's hard, to, again, you know, they're all my babies, you know, I'm not just going to choose one and be like, this is my favorite, you know. So what design do you remember that took you the longest to make? Um, probably a s this sleeve that I'm working on. Um, we're about like halfway right now, but it, uh, it's like a knight on the forearm, goes up into a dragon. On the inside, there's like a map, and then our tre we're gonna put a treasure chest like right up in there. But yeah, we've put in about 12 hours so far, and I would say we're about halfway. Interesting. So um, what is the most rewarding thing about being a tattoo artist? Um, just being able to like make people's dreams a reality, really. I mean, people come to me with this idea, and it's up to me to like, make it happen, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I love it. I love meeting new people, you know, and obviously I love art, so best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So how is the thought process when, it, when someone comes with an idea? Like, how do you make it happen? Um, so most people will, like, bring me an idea, and then I'll be, I'll be asking, like, where do they want it, like, how big they want it, and if they know what type of style they are interested in. Um, I do specialize more in a traditional style. I mean, I'm not saying that um, I do like hardcore traditional, but I did study it for my apprenticeship. So I do, trend, like a lot of stuff I learned from the traditional goes into my work today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how would you define your work? Like what's the definition that you have for your work? I would say like, um, 
traditional is like probably the best word to describe it. The thing is, though, every artist has their own specific. You can tell when someone does something, you know. Uh, the guy that did this, you know, his name's Chase. He's really well known for his roses, you know. Um, but just because it's a rose, you can tell it's Chase's rose just from his ability and his knowledge of tattooing, really. Mm -hmm. So, but of course, always there is uh, great things about uh, tattooing and stuff. But like, what are some difficulties that you struggle when it comes to tattooing? Um, I think it would have to be like people's ideas not really being able to be transformed into a piece of body art. I mean, there are really good ideas out there and um, a lot of like these micro tattoos, like these really small ones are like a really big fad in today. Um, a lot of the time though, it's not gonna heal properly. It's not gonna heal the way you think it's gonna heal. Um, so trying to like explain that is probably one of the more difficult things because like people know what they want, you know, and then I have to kind of like ease them out of it, the idea. Yeah. Do you remember a situation specifically about that kind of thing that you had to struggle with? Um, someone wanted like something like really small on like the back of their ear and I had to explain to them that like your ear is probably not going to be able to get like as much detail as they were hoping for. I mean if you did a simple like vine that would be fine because it's just like lines and leaves but like if you do like a realistic thing on your ear it's not going to hold up and if it, even if it does look good when it's done it's not going to look good in like a year now you know so. So how do you feel when your clients are like, um, their reactions they have once they see what you put on them? Like, how mm -hmm. do you feel about it? Like, Oh, I love it. I mean, a lot of, the most emotion comes from the memorial tattoos. So like when I do a tattoo that like helps them remember like a past, you know, family member or, like, you know, like a child. That's when like the emotion comes through most of the time. Um, and it is a big deal, you know what I mean? It, it is something that is going to be permanent and, and they're going to have a piece of them forever. So it is, you know, mm -hmm. I would say that. Yeah. yeah, so how did the pandemic affect your job during uh, tattooing? Because I know that mm. everything closed down. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. How was that? So I actually started after, like, I started during the pandemic itself. But I did, the people I worked with, they had to shut down. You know, they weren't allowed to have close contact or anything like that. Um, but when you do close down and you can't really tattoo, tattoo, that's the time to like focus on your craft. Like when you're at home, drawing, painting, doing anything like that, just like stay busy um, and improve your skills. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice to anyone who's interested in being a tattoo artist? Um, the best advice I can give is find someone that you actually look up to. Find someone that um, you're looking to be like and then ask them like what steps they took. Uh, don't rush into it either. I know it can be eager. Like if you find an apprenticeship, you're, you think that's the way out. Um, it's not. There's a lot of apprenticeships that, you know, you're gonna realize that it's not for you and that's okay. You know, everyone's different, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cory, so much for being on our show today. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Also, thanks to all of the viewers for watching Ready Camera One. This is your host, Nuria Hurtado, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Have a great day.